Roses are red, violets are blue. Did you miss National Red Rose Day? Well, you're gonna learn something new. Today, we're talking about the little holiday. Yes, it's little. Red Rose Day and how, although some might think it's just another Valentine's Day in June, it's actually a great opportunity to change the world around you with a simple act of love. Hi, and welcome to Path and Posture. I'm your host, Mariah Turner, and I'm here with my sisters, Brittany Turner and Sierra Turner. Hi, Hi. ladies. Hi. Hello. So Path and Posture podcast, we talk about the different paths that God might have us on, the posture, the mentality that we have as we walk through these stages of life. And right now, it's an interesting one for many people around us, but little holidays like National Red Rose Day are always a good way to put life into perspective, take a breath, take a breather, no matter what's going on, and just show appreciation. Have any of you out there heard of National Red Rose Day? No, crickets. Like, I had no idea until Brittany had brought it up. Brittany, you're an avid follower of National Red Rose Day. One, you like roses. I do. It's my favorite. They're they're one of your favorites. And so talk about how you stumbled upon this holiday and... When did you learn like learn about it? When, how long have you been celebrating it? I've <laughs> by yourself, uh, <laughs> right? I've officially been following it every June twelfth for three years, and it was because somebody had hashtagged it actually, and mm. I said, "Is this really a thing?" You know, Red Rose Day, because obviously my eyes are drawn attention to it because it's my favorite flower, and, and then the I, word red. Uh, yeah, mm. I like red and roses, and so I looked at it. And there it was, and it was, it's a national official holiday. And I was like, oh my gosh, I definitely need to make something about this. So it used to be associated with Valentine's Day, but somehow over the years, it got its own day, which it should. When you look at things in perspective, Valentine's Day, Candy Hearts, Someone You Love, Red Rose Day, it's more about appreciation for the people around you, or that's what that's what we've made it, at least, and, and I've seen it celebrated in that way for a lot of other people. With National Red Rose Day, they're really, when I was researching it, I really couldn't find a beginning of when it started or why it started, but Brittany, the way that you've gone about handling the day, going about the day, making plans for your National Red Rose Day... Why do you feel the need to share what you share with people when you do the things you do? Cliffhanger, what does she do? (laughs) I'm leaving it a surprise. So, okay. So back in middle school and high school, they, whenever Valentine's Day or like the winter holidays would come around, prom, homecoming, the student council would put on these, they would sell these carnations to students for students to buy for another student. And then usually what would happen would be it would go to their dates or friends. Um, But I noticed during these specific holidays and events that there were a lot of girls who, you know, there were no carnations purchased for them. And so around my junior year, I started to anonymously purchase uh, carnations just for some girls in the high school. And then school ended. And so I wasn't doing that kind of fun little thing that I would do. And then I discovered Red Rose Day. And I was like, well, I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) And so you're back. You're handing out roses again or or you did carnations. Now it's roses. But it's, it's more than just handing out a rose. It's more than just saying, hi, here you go. Like you've made it almost a rally of of love and support for people that you run into and you let them know you're loved, you're valued, you're cherished. And I don't even know who you are, mm-hmm. but this is true. And and you can't fight it because the same God that made all of us is looking down at you right now and saying, you're mine. Yeah. So you tag all your roses with something pretty inspiring. Uh, what is it that you shared this year? And why was that on your heart to really you know, bring that to light and let women know because it's mostly women that you're trying to share this with yes yes 
But um, the I do have boys, my, my son and then a neighborhood boy went with me this this last time to pass out the roses, mm-hmm. specifically to women. Mm-hmm. Uh, I the, And this kind of happened, so last year we went to Target with a dozen roses and we just passed out the roses. But this year, I and then I, I posted it on my Instagram with a caption that I wrote mm-hmm. for that picture to go into my kids' chat books. Because I, I Instagram specifically to write to my children. Yeah. And this year, I was like, you know, I want to I wanna make these tags and I want to invite other people to do this with me. And so I pulled together the my caption and I kind of reconfigured it. And I realized that this one rose would meet one of three types of women. The woman that is on top of the world and everything is perfect in her life. And a simple rose is just a cherry on top. The second one is a a woman that's kind of in the middle and has some decisions to make. And a simple rose is just a reminder that there's life ahead. And then the third one is, is a woman that's cried a thousand tears and is in such a dark place where we where a simple rose is the hope that she needed to continue you know and and I think being human and kind of walking in our own life it's easy to just look at ourselves and not realize that you are encountering one of these three women every single day whenever you choose to go out Mm -hmm. and I and I wanted to really push it this year specifically inviting other people to, sh- to get this message out because we had just gone through COVID. We had just gone through a very isolated season. Mm-hmm. And this introduced the idea that women, we have to regain this, you know, traction and meeting people where they're at. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. like churches are closed. Mm-hmm. And, and so you this- bring the church to the people. Yeah. And so the daughter of the King note was like, woman, we see you. Can, we can are... you read that for us? Yeah. Go ahead and, go ahead and read us what, what you'd written. So the back of the tag, so the, the front of the tag says National Red Rose Day, June 12th. It's every June 12th. And then it says it's you not are, a floating holiday. It's not a floating holiday. <laughs> <laughs> that is a reference to one of the prior <laughs> podcasts. Go look it up. <laughs> um, so it says you are loved and fully known, which is Psalm 139. And in the back of the tag says, Daughter of the King, I hope we found you today in a place of praise. The sun is shining on your life and blessings abound. The season has burst into a thousand butterflies and a simple rose was just a cherry on top. Daughter of the King, I hope we found you today in a place of peace, where a thousand notions may be up in the air, but the air turns out to be a lot clearer than you thought it'd be, where a simple rose was just a reminder that life is ahead. And then the third one is, Daughter of the King, I hope we found you today in a place of perseverance, where a thousand tears have been cried, and the place you're in now is so dark, all you know how to do is keep taking one more step forward. Where a simple rose was the rope you needed for the hope you've been reaching for. That's great. Very inspiring. And I'm, I'm sure it met a lot of people where they were. <laughs> we had a couple cry. Were. Yeah. Talk about, I mean, <laughs> just the response that you that you got. It was all over the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was women of all ages, all race, and of all places where they were at. It mm-hmm. was so, it was, it's so beautiful. And one of the reasons why I have my children pass out the roses is because it's a tangible free gift. You know, they don't understand the Bible and the gospel quite yet and sharing that, mm-hmm. except that Jesus loves them and, and, and that kind of makes them happy enough to kind of be like, yeah, Jesus loves you too. It's giving out a rose and, and watching the interaction between someone so grateful for such a free gift mm-hmm. is something that I like to correlate later on in life as they get older mm-hmm. and be like, look, remember that we give out these roses? The gospel, Jesus's love is just like that. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite stories that Brittany shared from this day was one of our neighbors that went along with her, her son went along with Brittany and he took a rose and he gave it to a little girl and he said, this is how God sees you. <laughs> yeah. That's just so sweet. And we're like, please keep saying that yes, for your so whole sweet. life. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he's eight years old. Mm-hmm. And so it was really sweet. Brittany said the uh, the dad of the daughter was standing there like, what? <laughs> Who are I'm you? sure he's thinking like, it's happening already? <laughs> <laughs> that was so yeah. quick. But <laughs> yes. Sierra, did you get the chance to hand out anything on National Red Rose Day? No. Okay. I stayed inside all day working. So. Yeah. See, that's... I had a lot different of different lives. And you know, when I originally 
handed out the invite because I had a it fell on a Friday and I was like you know we're gonna do a ladies dinner and a spa night yeah like you took it even a step further you you mm -hmm. you reached out to strangers but then you reached out to friends and family and said hey let me, let me yeah let me love on you yeah friends and family new friends all neighbors you invited some neighbors over where's COVID anybody <laughs> no no okay uh we had neighbors <laughs> over we're at that point now <laughs> we trust our neighbors yeah we trust the people living next door to us and we are all careful and we well the state of texas is pretty much like that right now yeah i feel like texas is a very safe place right now so anyway yes Brittany reached out to neighbors friends family and we had a nice dinner the kids went crazy by kids, I mean it was a bunch of little girls running around everywhere. There was a lot of nail polish involved. And, <laughs> and singing, face masks. And singing. And they all had just different face masks. Different not, face masks. COVID face treatments. Mask. Yes. They it were like spa. therapeutic. <laughs> yeah. So that was enjoyable. And they watched The Princess Bride. And it was a very fun night of socializing and just talking and getting to know and each other. Loving on one another. Exactly. And it was great hearing the different stories on how friends and family passed out their roses. I had one that. She passed it out early in the week, the roses to a soccer team, mm -hmm. and she had women and mothers contact her mm -hmm. who ne weren't necessarily believers. Yeah. And so this note says, daughter of the king, daughter of the king. And they're like, well, I may not necessarily believe that, but this is, this is very inspiring. Yeah. And it's touching. And then we had another friend who gave a dozen roses to a... Human trafficking refuge. Yeah, that was that was really big. Yeah, and so so it was just amazing to see. You know, I had these this idea. I said, "This is this is these are the tags. You guys, wherever you feel led, extroverted or introverted, pray on it. Let God lead you to the women that are supposed to be in your lives. We ha we must reconnect after the season we were just thrown into." Mm -hmm. And you know, as I <laughs> the morning of Friday, I literally was just going nuts because house was crazy and I was trying to get out the door with the kids I had five with me and I was like should I even do this because I you know I, I just it's just chaos mm -hmm. and I I went up to you and I I was dropping off roses You're like the more I run into the more I'm like yes I'm doing this <laughs> <laughs> I was committed yeah and it was really great because I originally I started out with eight and we hit up Dunkin Donuts uh their drive-thru you stopped and gave me three I did. So that helped. I did. <laughs> and I, I, I'll tell my story in a second, but yes, go ahead. Duncan. You and stopped at Duncan. Yeah, stopped at Duncan. And then we gave those roses to the women at the cashier. And they were like, why? Why? Why us? Why did you decide? You know, I said, that's just meaning where you're at, baby. It's like, mm -hmm. like you take these, you, you be reminded that you are loved and known and, and you just pray on it. And boom, like mm -hmm. that is, that is the seed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the three that you dropped off at my house, I was actually in the middle of printing tags and stringing them and about to go to the grocery store and pick up my own roses. Then you dropped off three and I was like, oh, thankfully, I don't have to go to the store with my kids and do that whole hoopla. So that was nice. <laughs> but the tags I'll keep for next year because I still printed them. Anyway, uh, we went to the park and saw a few moms there that were just leaving and they were holding babies in their arms that were crying and folding up strollers and just you know seemed like it's hectic someone said to me once going to the park it's like 50 percent packing up to go there 10 percent being there and then the other like 40 percent is packing up to leave so it's hard it's hard to get out and do that and they had these little itty bitty babies so um the kids and i just walked up and and gave the two moms their their roses and said, we just want to let you know that you're valued and you're loved and, and happy national red rose day. And they were so thankful. So it was really sweet. And then another lady was walking with her husband and we gave her our rose and they thanked us and they thanked Renee and they thought it was very sweet. So, and it's fun to just to see your kids interact with people that they don't know. Yes. It's so easy for kids to be timid and want to hide behind their mom, but when they're standing there smiling and handing out roses, <laughs> yeah. it's very sweet. It's one of the reasons why I just let my kids pass out the roses now, because just seeing the kids most of the time when uh, at Target specifically, and you know these women are looking on these shelves, they don't see the little tiny little ones sitting mm -hmm. next to them, literally holding a rose, yeah. and so they turn around, oh, <laughs> surprise, <laughs> and it's just the sweetest little interaction that I've Probably, I mean, just I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life, seeing just Remy and Cora holding these roses for three minutes, just waiting, yes, for, <laughs> just waiting for them to turn around. So the flower of the month of June is a rose. So it kind of makes sense that 
National Red Rose Day falls in June. But it's interesting that it falls on June 12th. I don't know why they picked the 12th, but there's actually a historic aspect. People correlate the, the rose with love and value. And the historical aspect of June 12th is that it's actually... Loving Day. Loving Day. And Sierra, you are our designated historian. I am. Well, she's also qualified for yes. this. Yes. She, she went to school. <laughs> she got a degree. I did. So. Well, just to give a little bit more context to the day and uh, its significance, not only for being National Red Rose Day, but also for being Loving Day. Loving Day is the anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision to legalize interracial marriages mm-hmm. in 1967, and it's named after the couple Richard and Mildred Loving. So, you know, especially in this time of a lot of racial division and angst and anger, I think that it was the perfect day for Red Rose Day to fall on Loving Day because it allows us to get out and show love to our neighbors despite race, despite age, age, and really connect with our community and walk out a kingdom mentality when it comes to loving on our neighbors as we would like to have done on ourselves. So, and a lot of us nowadays have this day to thank for our families. If it wasn't for this decision to legalize interracial marriages on a federal level, a lot of families we know nowadays wouldn't exist. And so we are thankful for that decision and for, you know, these moments in history that bring unity to our country. Amen. You know, I mean, you think of America. I mean, we are so... Melting pot. Yes. And it's beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that I love about just the randomness of this day is when you're a two on the Enneagram, you just want to love all the time. And so my heart saying for being a two or the helper is what a privilege it is to love. Mm -hmm. And when you are during a holiday, Valentine's day or during Christmas or Thanksgiving, you're, there's somewhat of an obligation to kind of follow out the traditions of these days. But when you truly just pick a day like Red Rose Day and so random and nobody's, everybody's going to be caught off guard, it really flows with the idea what a privilege it is to love. And one of the sayings that the, one of the quotes, the first quotes I ever fell in love with was C.S. Lewis's quote on appreciative love. And I loved it so much because it's the spark or the seed of every single relationship that I've had in my life. Every single one. It says, appreciative love gazes and holds its breath and is silent, rejoices that such a wonder should exist, even if not for him, would not be wholly dejected by losing her, would rather have it so than never to have seen her at all. Mm -hmm. When I meet these women at Target or at Duncan, I like to look at them in that way where I'm just thankful for you to receive the gift. And I would rather have lost you, right? That you, you know, this, this time, this brief moment than to never have seen you at all. We had a couple women come back and like, what does this mean? Like, you know, you met me here and this is great. This is, where'd you come up with this idea? And I'm like, literally someone else came up with it, but Mm -hmm. I'm giving it all back to God. And I'm just, you know, showing his glory. Mm -hmm. Some fun little things that happened yesterday. Your new neighbors, they are fun and oily people. They like their essential oils. (laughs) (laughs) Where is this going? Oh, no. Now now we're getting into the medicinal aspects of roses, which is, it's really interesting. But your friend Ruth, she actually made you a rose spray. She did. I spray it in my house. And it's wonderful. Yes. And so I was talking with her about some of the medicinal aspects of roses and we we got into all the other oils too. And I don't know if you people out there are oily people, but I, you know, there's some, there's some that I can agree with. Respect for them. Yeah. Yeah. I still like a good, good old Tylenol every now and then, but you know, I, I do love essential oils and I diffuse, but I was looking up the medicinal aspects of roses and this is on mother earth living.com. Sounds very crunchy. (laughs) So it says, rose petals are mildly sedative, antiseptic, and anti-inflammatory, and antiparasitic. That's amazing. They're also mild laxatives, a good supportive. This is, okay, wait, just don't go out eating roses right now. (laughs) I'm just going to put that out there. Okay, let me finish. They're also mild laxatives, a good supportive tonic for the heart, and a great, they're great at lowering cholesterol. So like that's, that's perfect. 
The antiseptic nature of rose petals makes them a wonderful treatment for wounds and bruises, rashes, and incisions. And what caught my eye in this just random search is that the rose treats wounds and bruises. Mm -hmm. And I thought about this day and how so many people are hurting, whether it's I've been isolated or I don't feel valued or no one understands what I'm going through. Roses, a single rose given to a single person says you are loved, you're valued, treats their wounds and their bruises. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I thought that that was just incredible Mm -hmm. that it's natural property is to heal. And here we are using them to heal our world around us. And And our spirit. And yeah. And and just a simple way of just saying, I see you. And there's a God who's seen you before creation Mm -hmm. and he loves you. Mm -hmm. And so... Brittany, thank you for putting this all together for everybody. <laughs> no, that's for Brittany. And, you know, I mean, it makes me want to cry. Um, I love that. That was, that was beautiful. It reminds me of Emily Bronte's quote, he who dare not grasp the thorns should never crave the rose. And I think when when Rose Day happens and, you know, we're, we're creating this interaction, this very random interaction, or even one just sharing with people that we love, I think – it's it's a moment of acknowledging pain and beauty together mm-hmm. to to grasp the thorns of pain the, the meet the person where they're at and and get into the difficult stuff while craving hope and the future and the beauty of mm-hmm. tomorrow and and you actually you you did all that you you handed them the rose and said I love you. Good luck. These, these hurt. <laughs> I wrapped mine in fabric once you handed them to me at my yeah. door. I said, oh, my gosh. You did these wrap These are covered in, in thorns. Yeah, no. So, but, you know, every rose has its thorns. <laughs> Nobody? Uh, no. <laughs> so when the night ended at after the ladies' dinner and the spa night, I pulled the girls together and I read them a little memory that I had growing up. And when I first met a rose bush, it was at my grandmother's house. And I was just really hasteful in in trying to pick one and I cut myself. And so I had told the girls that there are three different types of people that meet your, as a rose, you know, when I had passed these roses out, that there are three different types of people that encounter you. The first one, these people encounter with haste. And they try to hold the rose quickly, and in doing so, they hurt themselves and often the rose as well. I've, you know, my kids try to, to touch my roses, and the petals fall off because they prick themselves, and all of a sudden, <laughs> this rose is just everywhere. Mm-hmm. So haste will also act in ways that are often immature and heartbreaking. And this is something that you encounter when you're growing up, or when you're emotional and you're not thinking clearly. The second person is observation. They you know, they, they observe from far away and it's flattering to be seen, even though, you know, it's not, these people are not meant to be in our lives, but you'll never truly know the beauty and the privilege of love unless you hold it. And you're not going to get that when you're just looking afar. Appreciative love will never deepen. And so there's haste, observation, and the last one is devotion. This is where time stands still. Here, the person approaches you with kindness and wisdom and patience kneeling beside you, fully aware of your guard, your thorns, and your passion, and your beauty. And they're mindful of just everything. And so God is devoted to you. This is what we hold in the quiet of our spirits, that he's tending to us through every encounter we have to make us brighter in the sun and preparing our hearts for those who belong in our lives with equal devotion. We're going to encounter all three, haste, observation and devotion and we should treat all three with unconditional love not equal trust but unconditional love but those who are equally devoted to you should earn your trust Mm -hmm. it's very good very observant Brittany. thank you for sharing and, and just giving us that redirection that perspective we are three sisters if you don't know that and we have a band which is also a music ministry It's called Harmony Roads. And so on our podcast, Path and Posture, thank you again for joining us. We do like to close each one with a song of some sort or something, whether it's original or something pertaining to what we were talking about. And tonight, 
we wanted to try something fun. It might be a little well known. It's Not by the band all, Nickel Creek. And so we grew up listening to a lot of music. Just as musicians, we appreciate all music. We may not like it all, but we appreciate it all. But Nickel Creek, we did like. Um, they are bluegrass. You could you can call it bluegrass. Mm-hmm. And Folk. yeah, folky. And they uh, have some beautiful voices, beautiful talent with all stringed instruments and, and everything. So from mandolin to violin, everything. And there's this one song, Sierra. Uh, do you want to talk about it? It's called The Hand Song. And it first starts out with the story of a boy trying to pick a rose for his mother and out of her rose garden, and he hurts his hands. And she sees that although he hurt himself, he did so with an act of love. And the next verse goes on to say how she brings him to her lap and shares with him the story of Christ. And by seeing the wounds in his hands, he sees that what he did for us was an act of love, even though he was hurt by it. And then finally, the last verse, it's in reference to John fifteen thirteen, which says, there is no greater love than this, than for a man to lay down his life for his neighbor. For his friend. For his friend. His, yes. Yeah, so in a rough paraphrase. But um, he goes on to go to war in the Vietnam War, and he's drafted, and he rescues his brothers in war, and they see that through his sacrifice, he was loving them. So I'm going to let Mariah and Sierra sing this next song, because for the first half of Beyond the Veil, (laughs) Sierra was too young to sing anything. So Dad let her sing some ooze by the time she was, what, 11? This is my time to shine. So this is her time to shine. Here we go. The boy only wanted to give mother something And all of her roses had bloomed Looking at him as he came rushing in with them Knowing her roses were doomed All she could see were some thorns buried deep And tears that he cried as she tended his wounds, and she knew it was love. It was one she could understand. He was showing his love, and that's how he hurt his hands. He still remembers that night as a child. On his mother's knee She held him close and she opened her Bible And quietly started to read And seeing a picture of Jesus he cried out Mama he's got some scars just like me And he knew it was love It was one he could understand. He was showing his love, and that's how he hurt his hands. It was one he could understand. He was showing his love, and that's how he hurt his hands. 